You know, in Texas, we supplement our whitetail deer with some 300 million pounds of shelled corn annually. Now, most of that corn is run through feeders as a form of bait during hunting season, but it can also serve as an energy source during the winter months. But unfortunately, a good bit of that 300 million pounds of shelled corn is going to non-target species such as raccoons and wild pigs. The problem with wild pigs having access to that bait is that we're probably making our wild pig problem worse due to the supplementation with shelled corn. Uh, sows become in better physiological condition, which means they produce more eggs, have larger litters, and more of those pigs in those litters survive as a result of access through supplementation. Additionally, whitetail deer don't want to be around wild pigs, and if you have a, a deer herd that's around a feeder feeding or around a food plot feeding and you have wild pigs show up, the deer leave because behaviorally they just don't want to associate with wild pigs. So we have the issue of producing more pigs. We have the issue of wild pigs consuming a foodstuff that's meant for another species. So we have the economic loss associated with that. And then we have the behavioral issue of deer not wanting to associate with wild pigs and the whitetail deer hunting industry in the state of Texas is a $2 billion plus industry. So there's a number of reasons on a number of fronts of why we would like to exclude pig access to supplementation meant for whitetail deer. In 2009 on the Welder Wildlife Foundation, we conducted a study to determine if we could successfully limit wild pig access to supplemental feeders feeding shelled corn but at the same time not significantly reduce deer access to those same feeders. So in July and October of 2009, we put up feeders. We filmed with remote sensing cameras all species visits and calculated a visitation rate by all species. And then following a period of time, we then erected the excluders around each feeder. Now, each excluder consisted of six panels 16 feet long with 12 T-posts. This gives you a circular excluder of about 29 or 30 feet in diameter. This is about the minimum size I would erect because you want to have the opportunity for multiple deer to enter the excluder and feed at the same time. So if you wanted to make it eight or 10 panels uh, in perimeter, that would be better six panels this would be about the minimum size plus on most spin feeders it will capture about 95 percent of the shelled corn fed at any given feeding we put our excluders up at three different heights this happens to be 34 inch the height of a standard swine panel with the small graduated mesh at the bottom coming up we also split some 60 inch panels and made 28 inch high panels. So we had 34, we had 28, and then we had 20 inch high panels. So among those three heights, we wanted to determine if we could successfully exclude pigs from those feeding areas. What we found is that large pigs could actually breach the 20 inch high panels. They could climb over the panels and access the feed. However, we had no breaches occur at either a 28 inch height or a 34 inch height, the height of the standard swine panel. And more importantly, we did not significantly reduce deer access to those feeders. With the cost being about equal to erect a 34 inch or a 28 inch high excluder, what we now recommend is the use of 34 inch swine panels and 12 T post as a minimum. It'll cost about $175 per feeder location to re erect this if you go with the minimum of six panels. However, just in feed consumption alone, where you have intense interaction between deer and wild pigs and competition for that food source, they could easily pay for themselves in one to two hunting seasons. Now some subsequent research from Texas A&M Kingsville that was conducted indicated that if you have excluder heights above 33 inches, it can limit fawn access. So what we've done is we've removed this top mesh down 
dropped it from 34 inches down to 28 inches and cut about a four foot wide notch. And if you'll place several of these around the perimeter of your feeder excluder, what we've done is we've enhanced fawn access and dropped the height to 28 inches. We still had no wild pig breaches occur at the 28 inch height. So if you're concerned about fawn access, you can cut several of these notches around the perimeter Continue to exclude wild pigs from having access to that supplement, but enhance the fawn access and not impact your adult deer access at all. So this is a really good way to limit wild pig access to your supplement for all those reasons I mentioned. And as a result, we're on a campaign to have hunters across the state of Texas to fence their feeders if they have habitat that wild pigs and whitetail deer share.